Well, delighted to be here, and uh, really, thanks for being here. Um, you saw the title, and 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 I, you know, although the title says talking about you know separating myth from reality, uh, what I really want to talk about is some of the cliches and and really reflect from our experience. The idea is not to really preach you versus you know talk about what we learned. We've we've had a number of failures and successes, as you know, both teach you different dimensions, and really hopefully that our experience would would be beneficial to you, and in you know. Acknowledging that a one game developer's myth could be another's uh, reality. So let me talk about play first a little bit, although it's not about play first, really about uh, what we're learning and how that might be helpful to you. Is that, as somebody said, Flo is our main character. Uh, she is the second most downloaded game content behind Angry Birds over 600 million times. And, you'll, and, and our focus is really developing great games for family and friends. So that's really the, the primary uh, target demographics for us. We go from 8 to 80 and about 60% female audience. And in addition to you know, developing our own original content, we also combine other great content from our partners. You, you know SpongeBob very well. Uh, we had a SpongeBob Diner Dash a partnership with Nickelodeon and, and really has been a very successful game. I don't know, I, don't, I know this is not a part of the trivia, but I don't know if anybody knows who this character is. Okay, no prizes. Her name is Mavis, and she is 118 years old. She's a vampire, and, and one of the main characters of this upcoming great movie from Sony Pictures uh, called Hotel Transylvania. It'll be released in September. And again, we're incorporating a Hotel Transylvania a content and experience and the whole story into Hotel Transylvania Dash. You know, for us, this sort of bringing unique content to the users for their you know, delightful experience is extremely important. So let's talk about some of the myths. As you know, like the old prospector, we're all you know, panning for gold. And, and, and during that journey, there are a lot of learnings. And frankly, we're learning every day what we you know, uh, practiced six months ago is, is different from what we're doing today, and I'm sure it'll change uh, significantly a year from now. So time is, you know, unfortunately we don't really have time, you know, have the capability like Doc does to go back to the future. As you know, this, this short shelf life, that, that the you know, game has a very limited lifetime and, and you really sort of have to monetize it in that very short period of time. What we're really seeing is, and our, again, learning has been, as you can see here, every trough is a, is a sort of like a battle scars and maybe, you know, and success and failures over the last two and a half years. And we were able to, you know, learn from our mistakes and really continue to you know, improve the experience of the Dash franchise. You know, for us, the commitment to quality is really important but we have commitment to really have a very metrics-driven live ops to really un analyze and monitor and, and manage and, and user behaviors because you know, a lot of new users coming onto the platform, our games are only available on iOS, so, so we really have to constantly monitor, we do frankly do 24 by seven, look at user behaviors and, and really learn from that and, and implement uh, the new features and functionality. If you can see that in the last two and a half years, you know, we've done a number of releases from you know, about two years ago, 95% of our <coughs> excuse me, revenues came from paid purchasing. Right now, a great majority comes from freemium uh, capabilities. So you're seeing the number of uh, releases and, and really wanted to develop and deliver a very high, <coughs> high quality native experience on the platform and continue to optimize user experience and, and really listen to the customers. We get a lot of customer uh, feedback and reviews and incorporate their feedback into the gameplay and improving features and functionality. So really as a result of a lot of sort of you know, experimentation and, and really constant uh, attention paid to the game, we're able to you know, grow about three and a half times in the last um, two and a half years. This is the revenue chart of the Dash franchise. The other part is, you know, I'm going to give you over the course of this myth and, and fact discussion some data from various games uh, that are hopefully beneficial to you. What we're focusing on, uh, what we've been doing this year on the Dino Dash is, is really 
looking at the user experience and, and how we can optimize not only user experience but overall gameplay. So the three key areas for us <clears throat> is, you know, user acquisition has been getting more and more costly. We, we really pay attention to top of the funnel. The bottom left really shows you that when they come to top of the funnel, what we focus on is how to really improve the retention because um, that really obviously has a significant impact on the play, you know, pain versus you know, free player uh, life cycle throughout the whole game. As you can see, even the last you know, seven months or six months in, in this year, we were able to improve the, the retention and, and really wanna make sure that when somebody comes onto our network, really understand their behaviors, look where they drop off, what do we have to do to improve their experience, how do we improve the quality and, and improve the retention. Second part is conversion points. And this is an example of one of our games that has sort of free uh, gameplay and after level four and level seven, you're asked to convert. And we noticed that we can really improve significantly what happens at level four and level seven by you know, uh, analyzing the behaviors and looking at what causes a drop off. Is it the messaging? Is it the, you know, the gameplay? Do they really understand? And they, there's a sort of the paid version or, or some additional feature they can purchase. So we look at the key conversion points and, and really improve the, the, the you know, percent conversion. As you can see here, <clears throat> one of them went up three and a half times and the other one is, is over two X. And the third part is what can we offer to monetize additionally? And as you know, the, given the current app environment, again, really I'm humbled to be here, there are 115,000 great games on, on the App Store and the competition is really fierce. So what we do is we really analyze, not only you know, beyond the great gameplay, what do we have to do to improve monetization as part of the quality gameplay? As you can see, by adding uh, sort of different venue and currencies and bundles, we're you know, able to improve ARPDA this year alone by 20, 20%. Second part is, this is, I never saw the movie, but I like the picture, the uh, Charlie Chaplin's Modern Times movie, that really the message here is needless production of goods. So the myth is, is do you really need, you know, you need new content to drive new monetization? Frankly, we do both, but as you know, new content generation could be really expensive, especially, you know, the, the life cycle of the, of the game enhances but what we try to do is, you know, find ways to improve monetization without adding a lot of new content at, at a rapid pace. So one of the things that you'll hear throughout my presentation is A-B testing. We do a lot of A-B testing. We do multivariate A-B testing. We prefer not to do single, but the multivariate, you really have to have enough segregation so you can analyze and make sense of the data. So through A-B testing, this really shows seven day A-B testing results variant population versus the whole population. You know, through uh, A-B testing, we were able to improve the currency sunk, the, the current currency balance that they had, and, and through, you know, in the variant group, and as a result, they monetized much better. The other part is that fine-tuning the economy. As part of our game design is, you know, our focus is to come up with a very delightful, fun, engaging gameplay and also design a robust economy to go along with that. And as you know, you can have a sort of great uh, theoretical model, but when you release it, the, the, the facts are, could be significantly different. So what we've done here is we we'll look at the mid-level sort of gameplay level um, 10 through the 15 and, and optimize the complete economic model. As a result, what you're seeing is pre-fine tuning to post-fine tuning we were able to improve significantly. Not at the same level in all levels, but we were making significant impact. So what you're seeing, ARPDA improvement by level on top and also conversion on the bottom. Overall, our model is really a holistic model that starts with the, our perception or our assumption of the economic behavior of the users within the gameplay. And so the game design continues and the product management uh, in, in conjunction with that comes up with a very interest, uh, you know, compelling economic model that really reflects the, or targets a longevity of a game across, you know, multiple levels. But as you know, life is far from theoretical model. What we do is that once the, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna go through every 
bull is here. Hopefully, you can take a picture and, and, and uh, be helpful to you. Once we have the game uh, up and uh, running live, we look at the actual data and then try to compare what we see as data versus the theoretical model. And, and based on that, we start looking at the, you know, the balances, spending patterns, and behaviors, and then look at and start running a number of multivariate A-B testing. You know, look at the price sensitivity, look at the, how the you know, drop-offs are happening, what's causing it, look at the time in management within the game, and onto plot, product placement, and, and, and also understand the spending habits across the whole uh, you know, uh, level profile. As a result, we go back and update the base model with an optimized model. And that model changes the economics of the overall, and you keep the same structure, but you change the parameters in the economic model. And then go back and it'll start with that being the base model and continue to update it. This is, if you guys are uh, familiar with robotics or AI or dynamic systems, it's a like sort of very tight predictive corrector model that you have a prediction of the model, you have actual data you run in a very robust analysis, 24 by seven, update the model and go back to do it. And this is what our PMs are 24 by seven, really. We look at every data coming from Swerve, Flurry, and, and Apple, analyze it, look at our own data, and then come up with adjustments to their economic behaviors. Third one, we talked about the family. Our family definition is different from Michael Corleone's uh, definition. And you know, we don't know if they're fickle or not. We think that we can perhaps affect the behavior. And we don't see that as a betrayal. From our uh, perspective, the you know, user behavior or engagement could be improved if we provide a number of things, starting with the quality product. And our focus is that we really want to have games that people can relate to and people uh, stay engaged and have an, ideally have a, build an emotional attachment to the game. And the other part is strong brand. We want to make sure that when we target family and friends, when Somebody's playing uh, play first games, you know that it's gonna be a great product, it will have high quality, and will give you delightful experience. And we've been really spending a lot of time on improving our you know, brand presence and visibility across the whole globe. And the final part is really finding ways to you know, eliminate fickleness and really improve engagement through our uh, targeted cross promotion. What we have built in the last uh, sort of 10 months or so our own proprietary ad platform or publishing platform. We only publish our own content and we wanna make sure that we have a way to communicate with our user base. As a result, again, you can see you know, the ups and downs, but overall we were able to improve our uh, monthly active users in the last uh, 15 months or so uh, by three X or X, uh, I think the new numbers will be even higher. Again, this is for us a constant effort to really engage with the users and provide, um, and analyze their behavior and provide a uh, mechanism to improve their you know, uh, gratification and also engagement in the game. Other part is what we call P3, and P3 stands for Play First Publishing and From a Network. Every game has an API that we manage. It's really turning into a very sophisticated ad targeting and publishing platform. And, and what you're seeing in the green columns are the monthly fresh installs coming from our network alone. It really gives us significant UA um, leverage and also lowers the cost of acquisition for us. And as you can see, tell, we've been experimenting with that. The orange line is the click-throughs and the, the blue is conversion rate. And, and it really, I think it's okay to really make mistakes, but we have a pretty tight loop to improve that. And, and overall, this will become a significant publishing and, and communication platform for us with our users. Is you know, users can go through a, a tutorial and learn a game and start playing. After a while, some of the tutorials elements are really lost or maybe not remembered as much. So we still use P3N to communicate back to the user some subtleties of the game. So that you know, we keep engaging them throughout the whole life cycle and the levels. And this is another example of, of our zoo game has been around over 15, 18 months now. And, and as you can see, it's an age population. And at the very bottom blue line, what you're seeing is new users. So our, in this game, our goal is to provide an experience to really focuses on the, the players have been with the game for a long time. About you know, three quarters of them have been with the game over 
30, uh, over 30 days and then about 40% you know, over three months. For us to sort of continue to monetize and give a experience targeting the age population and, new, and take the pressure off of the new installs is really important. And what we do here is the same game that, and these are, these are the levels you're seeing is, our goal is really to find ways, this is really important for us, to find ways to, you know, to, to, uh, to determine or, you know, discover pain players at every stage of the game. It's really, and one of our folks is, what can we do at any stage of the game, again, starting with the great game, to really monetize and create new pain players at that stage? Number four and last one, um, again, you know, this is part cliche, but there's a real one here. So they're all cute and adorable, but one really pays for it. So for us is to really understand who are they and how they behave and what we, what we can do to improve their uh, economic behaviors. Again, everybody has a different definition of minnows, dolphins, and, and whales. For us is, you know, minnows are real they engage um, early in the game. Again, this is related to the first conversion you know, dynamics. And then they, uh, you know, these are all median values, by the way, I'm, I'm talking about. They generate about two or more in app purchasing and average lifespan or median lifespan in the game is about three months. And, and you know, again, part of our effort is to really create a DNA mutation to turn some of the minnows into dolphins. And when that, you know, those are the players that really start engaging mid-game, and they spend, they do eight or more in-app purchasing, and they spend 13 more times than minnows. That's really important for us to understand who, how they're migrating from minnows to dolphins, and their at median age within the game is about four to six months. And the whales, um, they are, they become more sort of prominent in mid to late stage, as you were seeing in the previous slides of how the aging, paying population was be behaving across the whole uh, levels, then they start becoming very predominant in, in mid to late ga uh, gameplay, and, and again, median number is about 16 or more in-app purchasing, and they spend 43 times more than minnows. So if you look at the spending habits between minnows and 13x for dolphins and 43x for Rails, it's an important real behavior pattern for, for us to understand and target. And between dolphins and whales, you're seeing another three and a, three and a half times, you know, uh, purchasing difference. And, and whales, as you know, they tend to be with the game for a long period of time. So what we do is once we try to, you know, once we start seeing the, the sort of the behavior patterns of minnows and, and dolphins and whales, we try to, you know, sort of approximate how they're going to behave. The first conversion has a propagating impact on the second, third, and fourth. We know that if somebody spends the money first time, over 60% chance they will spend uh, uh, in, for a second time. And not only that, I'll show you later on, when they, again, in our experience, when they spend money second time, they tend to spend more than the first time. So, so the first conversion, and then monitoring the second conversion, and third and fourth, and they start you know, going from non-paying to minnows and dolphins and whales. And, and we monitor this very carefully. So knowing the uh, tar you know, segmented behaviors, part of our effort has been how to really target uh, different messaging and different content, different uh, experience to, to them. And what you're seeing in these you know, bars are the dollar value of uh, first time conversion and the second time conversion. If you follow the same color scheme, you can see that the first time conversion dollar value is less than the second time conversion. So they tend to spend more second time. What we're also showing here that by offering different limited time offers, LTOs, we were able to improve the dollar value of the first time conversion and also the second time conversion. And for us, this is a part of, again, understanding how they behave and what do we have to do monetize that segment different than the other segment or how we can migrate them from minnows to, to, to whales. And hopefully this was helpful and uh, like I said, we're, we're learning a lot and uh, our learning is uh, ever-changing and, 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 and frankly, um, 
you know, given the quality of the competition and given, uh, you know, what the industry is going through, we're excited about the sector. You know, it's really populated by incredibly talented people like yourself, and hopefully our experience was helpful to you. Thank you very much. I know we have some time for questions. I, I would like to ask one question. Your company's made a successful pivot from being a deluxe download company onto doing sort of mobile and microtransaction based. Do you still develop for uh, standalone applications or are you entirely uh, microtransaction based? Uh, microtransaction based. And how long ago did you make that change? Uh, I think it started over a year, but you know, significant transformation happened in the last eight months. Okay, thank you. Okay. Todd's gonna be our runner. Please wait till I get the mic. For your market segmentation, did you employ the traditional market research methodology or do something else? We really look at the in-game behaviors, you know, and frankly, every day, our days start with looking at the previous day's behaviors, and as you know, it takes time to, uh, to get data from Flurry, Swerve, and others, and on our own data plus Apple data, we look at uh, in-game behaviors and across levels, across sinks and sources, what they're doing and try to then model and, 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 and really and try to identify how the segmentation is happening across the, the, you know, the level of profile. Thank you very much for the talk. Um, you, d you mentioned that you have some users that are on for more than 120 days. And are those users, are they hitting like the ceiling in terms of content? I hope not. Are they <laughs> so, um, so they still have much more content to purchase. Oh yeah, absolutely. Time. I mean, these games tend to have economic value of Five to ten thousand dollars. If you were to purchase everything, you know, sort of, you go up to ten thousand dollars. Okay. So, uh, so far, nobody has spent that much money, but uh, I hope <laughs> they haven't capped. I see. Also, um, when you introduce new content for for those type of users, um, do you try and add um, more expensive content or more cheap content that they can buy more often? Or what? you know, I, I think the uh, again, every game is different, and every uh, you know, somebody's veil would be different from the others. Some are really into vanity, so scarce items are, are highly uh, attractive to whales, right? Especially if you have a limited time offer, let's just say for Valentine's Day, Valentine's Day for 48 hours. And, and we do the multivariate testing that sometimes some, you know, part of the population has no price sensitivity. Hi, uh, thanks for the talk. Um, I noticed that uh, ad-based monetization was not part of your uh, presentation. Obviously, out of all the buckets that you represented in your presentation, one of them was the user that's never going to pay. And we all know that that's potentially 85 to 95% of your audience. So I'm just curious why you wouldn't pay. I mean, are you guys paying attention to those users? And are you monetizing through non-IAP methods? So we have zero revenues from advertising. And, and our focus has been to really preserve the quality game experience. And, and we have you know, wonderful ad partners. And, and our, you know, we wanted to really swing the uh, pendulum to non-advertising and really have a sort of uninterrupted game experience. And only content you'll see is our own content. Now, X many you know, months from now, we may dedicate part of our uh, population to advertising-based you know, economic model, but that hasn't been our core focus. Is there a reason why? Uh, really, uh, focusing on great game content, monetization within that game, and we may be leaving some money on the table. On the other hand, we think we're getting a lot of sort of loyalty and engagement from the current user base. Thank you. Any oh. other questions? Thanks for your time. Sounds like.